All right, let's get started. We have a lot to cover today. If you're in the webinar tool, uh, please use the Q&A feature on the right-hand panel to let us know if you have any questions. I will be answering them at the end of this webinar presentation. We're gonna walk through Audience Network 101 today and going through a deep dive on optimization techniques and best practices. So this is what our agenda is going to look like. First of all, an introduction to Facebook. Facebook's overall mission is to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together. Audience Network specifically serves publishers, empowering them to make meaningful connections between people and businesses. Everything that we do connects to this mission. In 2017, we paid out over $3 billion to publishers. And today's challenges makes it increasingly important to understand the best monetization options for your business. Let's start with Audience Network and how we differentiate ourselves from other ad networks in several key areas. First, we give you access to our global demand pool of 7 million advertisers who want to scale their campaigns and extend their reach beyond Facebook, making it one of the largest demand pools in the world. Our diverse set of demand includes both large advertisers as well as local businesses. So this demand gives tremendous value for you, resulting in high fill rates and CPM. Next, we optimize for advertiser value. What this means is when we match an ad to the user in one of your apps, we make sure that they are matching your users with the most relevant ad to optimize for intentional and deep engagement with the ad. Whether it be an ad for an app install, going to the app store, downloading the app and using it, or for e-commerce leading to a purchase. And thirdly, we have high quality targeted ads that are matched with Facebook users only. So this goes back to matching an ad to the user in one of your apps to ensure that it's the most relevant ad for them. We're built on Facebook's people-based marketing capabilities. So you can match people using your app with ads that they're most likely to want to see. And this creates a better experience and higher retention. And finally, this is an important takeaway. We have a leadership position in revenue per impression, especially in rewarded video, where in general, we lead the market. We deliver a number of formats across platforms like mobile web, desktop, and mobile apps, mobile apps, as well as Facebook services via instant articles and Messenger. So let's take a look at how the market and consumers look at ad formats. So we wanted to find out what gamers think of some of the top ad formats that we offer. So we conducted a research study and tested seven ad formats with gamers, and here you can see the results. For these ad formats, the higher up they are in the image shown, the least disruptive they were found to be, and the further to the right, the higher the quality of the ad experience. What stands out here is reward video and native at the top right corner. So these are perceived to be the least disruptive and highest quality ad formats for gaming apps. This is important to you as an app developer as you design your user flow to incorporate ad formats that your users will be most receptive to. I understand that most of you are here for the same reason, to grow your business and to monetize your content. When we look at revenue, there are two pillars to optimize. The first, impression, and the second, CPM. I'm gonna talk about CPM first. When you look at it, you wanna look at the app level down to the yield level to review the entire flow. To quickly cover CPM optimization, you wanna always pick the right format that fits with your user journey in the application. You want to try to acquire and retain quality users on your application as well, and focus on creating the best user experience that drives conversion. 
Lastly, and maybe most importantly, you'll want to look at implementing a CPM target in your mediation. For impression optimization, there are many factors that contribute to impression. There are seven layers in the funnel, and you'll want to ensure that you're reviewing all of these layers as you integrate and optimize with audience network. To start with the most obvious, if you have a large number of apps, ensuring that you're integrating and optimizing all your apps to maximize your revenue. You'll also want to ensure that you are integrating both iOS and Android platforms, as this will contribute as well. Third, how many people install your apps and their engagement is also a factor. The more daily and monthly active users you can send us, the bigger the impact. The amount of traffic that you send to audience network also matters. The higher, the better, obviously. Now let's take a look at match rate and fill rate. This involves your user acquisition strategy. Audience network only sends ads to Facebook users. So ensuring that you acquire users with Facebook profiles on their device. Focus on acquiring users with potential to buy or convert to advertiser objectives as well. And using Facebook login can also help you optimize your match rate and fill rate. For fill rate, the more valuable your users are to Facebook, the higher your fill rate will be. And for show rate, this involves which ads you decide to show, and that's in your control. You can request a certain number of ads from audience network, but depending on what your users are doing in your app, you may only show a percentage of these filled ads. Most importantly on impression optimization, audience network works best when we're at the, at the top position of your mediation waterfall. Eventually, all of these factors will impact your impression on audience network. Moving on to setting up the foundation for optimization. As a foundation, we have SDK, ad spaces, ad caching, and those lead to better ad experiences. We're currently on SDK version 5.4.1, and we update it regularly as well. There's a great value to you to have the latest SDK, as it not only enables you to have the latest features and more stability, but also helps to drive revenue. You can see on Monetization Manager what version of the SDK you have on your app. For ad space, ad spaces are places within your app where you deliver a specific ad experience. So think about the user flow in your app to determine available ad spaces that will offer a good user experience. For ad caching, and for obvious reasons, you don't want your users to be waiting for an ad. So you want the latency to be invisible to that user, but at the same time, ensuring that you are not requesting ads long before they're ready to be served. So the current max ad caching time allowed is 60 minutes. However, for best practices sake, we recommend that you call for ads as close to serving them as possible. In the next following slides, I will talk about better ad experience, which is very important for publishers who want to improve their revenue. This is a base point that publishers can start to look into. So we'll show some examples of what to do and what not to do. Some of these may seem obvious, but we wanna be thorough in avoiding, in avoiding a bad user experience. So here you'll see an example of a bad ad experience caused by an overwhelming amount of ads shown during one action from the user. This is an example of too many ads which can potentially cause poor user retention. You'll also want to avoid full screen ads that are shown in unexpected stages in the app flow. So this ad interrupts the gaming experience and so it's a much better user experience to put it at the end of a specific level. Here's another example of a bad ad experience. The player 
is playing the game and trying to click to finish the task. However, the ad shows up where the user will be clicking, which may easily cause accidental clicks. The only clickable area should also be the CTA button and the X out button to minimize accidental clicks here. So what we really want and are really after is intentional clicks. Advertisers wanna know that the action users are taking are deliberate. This is an example of a good ad experience. In the example, the ad shows up after the task was finished when the user wasn't interrupted. So on to revenue maximization. These flow types are useful to think about. There are many opportunities within most apps to place an ad where the user would be more receptive and more engaged with the ad. These flow types are references to help define good and bad ad placements from a user mindset. So in, in our research, we identified 12 types of user flows. Then we're able to segment them into three tiers based on the quality of the user engagement. The top tier includes four user flows. In feed, similar to Facebook, where the user is in a discovery mindset. Ad discovery, where the user makes an intentional decision to interact with an ad, usually labeled as ad of the day or offer of the day. After task, as simple as it sounds to use um, a flashlight example, once you're done using the flashlight to search for something and you close out the light, this would be the best time to show an ad. There's also the left and right swipe. Similar to the feed leveraging experience, um, this is where users are also in a discovery mode. There are five flows in the middle tier. I'm not going to spend any time on these. They neither drive engagement or are particularly detrimental to the user engagement or the user experience. The last tier, however, is detrimental to the user experience as they tend to either be more disruptive like mid-game or mid-task or simply ignored when you have a static ad while scrolling against content. So take a look at these best practices for reward video. After a task or level, you can give options to the user if they would like to view a video to receive rewards. This is a natural break and it provides options to the user to ensure a good user experience. The user can, can choose to view the video or claim the reward or they can skip it. If you're planning on adding rewarded video to your game or revisiting a current integration, please consider these three points. The first is descriptive entry point. You wanna give the user a clear understanding of the value proposition taking place in the game. You need to clearly establish what the player is giving, their time and attention, and what they're receiving, the reward. You'll also want a quality ad experience. So making the entry point reward video as natural as possible. And lastly, informative messaging, making sure that the user knows what's going on and, in, and that they're in charge of their ad experience overall. As I mentioned before, Audience Network has a leadership position in CPM for rewarded video in the main markets. If we look at the gaming sector, what we see is a very significant increase in revenue from more rewarded video compared to other ad networks. Here's an example from Playrix and pretty simple. Similar to rewarded video, you can also implement interstitial ads, making sure to be careful of where interstitials are placed to ensure that you're using that your users are highly engaged. And with high engagement, they're more likely to engage with the ad more deeply as well, which leads to higher CPMs 
as we value your users at a higher level. So these tactics that I just spoke about will all be meaningless if this happens to your user. So this isn't a mistake. This is actually a spinning wheel is what you should be seeing. Ad caching is fairly straightforward, but an important factor is no user really wants this experience. And I'm sure you as a publisher don't want this either. So this is here to demonstrate that ad caching can have a huge benefit if you do it. You'll wanna leverage ad caching to reduce latency and improve the user experience. This also helps to avoid losing impressions. So request the ad right before showing it to ensure maximum monetization. On Audience Network, we always select the ad that we predict will perform best for the individual user in that particular context and at that specific moment. So we advise that caching is done on a first in first out basis as we return ads in order to show the ads with the highest EPM poss possible. Another tip is to ensure that the ad is actually viewable. So viewability is a major component of monetization. Viewability is subjective in that everyone seems to have their own way of measuring it and everyone thinks that their way is best. So it can mean a lot of things um, to a lot of different people. And so I want to define what it means for audience network as our advertisers only pay on viewed impressions. So for video, it's measured by the video start. And for display, it's measured by 100% of the width and height of the ad within view. The last major piece of advice is to bring video into your app or property. We know from consumer response to video in advertising and outside of the advertising across the whole family of Facebook apps that video is the preferred medium of consumption and it is a more immersive and engaging content. So if you can install videos by rewarded video, by native or interstitial formats, you're likely to see much higher engaging users and higher CPMs as a result. So to bring video to your content, you'll need to do a couple of things. First, and most importantly, upgrade to the latest SDK. Using the latest SDK can have positive revenue impact as well. So you wanna always stay on top of that. And secondly, including video under uh, media type or display formats on the dashboard when you create a placement. Let's move on to bidding. Bidding is where Facebook is committed to driving transparency in the marketplace. So most publishers are still using the waterfall model, which has some serious limitations for publishers. First, there's limited competition. Given a waterfall setup, the ad opportunity doesn't go to the source that's willing to pay the highest. Second, there's no transparency. The mediation is often a black box. So publishers don't know what demand sources are actually willing to pay. And third, there is often high and often hidden opportunity costs associated with the waterfall as well. So bidding does away with all of these limitations. It offers a fair marketplace where the publisher sees all the bids that are coming in from all the partners at the exact same time to ensure that each impression is rewarded with the highest bid. We have a number of case studies for bidding as well. This one is from Talifun. It's a casual game company who saw a 20% lift in revenue from bidding. So bidding is still fairly new in the marketplace, but if you want to dive, if you want to drive more revenue per impression and overall yield in general, I encourage that you look into it. There are a lot more resources on the Audience Network website. We have an in-house kit but also work with third parties like Mopub and Google to help you integrate bidding. Facebook's first product in this space is header bidding for mobile web. And we also have real-time bidding for mobile apps. And we've integrated partners mentioned previously who are aligned with our code of conduct to support a healthy ecosystem for people, publishers, and advertisers as a whole. 
All right, to price controls. This is a very important tool to help you optimize your revenue. To ensure the best experience for your user, we offer controls for you to optimize the video content that you show in your app. I wanna quickly highlight these two points. Uh, the first is frequency. So that allows you to choose the number of times a user sees an autoplay ad within a chosen time period. Um, and then the second is connection type, which allows you to tailor when you show those video ads to user base. Today, price floors are commonly used in the market by many publishers. Audience Network uses price targets, however. To differentiate, price floors delivers a minimum bid that you're willing to accept. This often misses potentially valuable bids that fall right below your price floor. These miss bids can help you maximize your revenue and your yield overall. So instead of using a price tool that only aims to reach the minimum that you're willing to accept, CPM Targets is a pricing tool that's built to help you reach the bid that you actually want. And so developed to help you maximize your revenue through consistent CPM performance, CPM Targets aims to deliver your desired target by accepting all of the bids that are above the target and some of the bids that are below in order to deliver your desired CPM target every 24 hours, which ultimately helps you to maximize your revenue for every placement and offers you a lot more control over it. So the benefits of this are better forecasting for your ad revenue uh, with, more C with more stable CPM performance uh, to help you better predict revenue across your app. You can implement country-specific targets with ease as well, so you can easily set up different targets per country, region, and for the rest of the world, and you can optimize your waterfall effectively. So we touched on how price floors are different from targets. The most commonly available option in the market is price floors, and this represents the lowest amount of money that you're willing to be paid per impression. With audience network, CPM targets overcomes this disadvantage by hitting a target rather than a bare minimum. So this means that if you want to get an average CPM of 250, you should set that price target to 250. This gives you greater control over your mediation for waterfall by allowing you to set placements at an individual price point rather than setting a minimum bid amount. And we currently offer two pricing, two price settings um, that are available in Monetization Manager. The CPM target is the first, which I talked about, and the second is accept all prices. So each option provides its own benefit, um, but let's take a look at which setting is best for your business specifically. CPM targets are best for publishers and developers who have multiple ad networks within their mediation. So if you're actively managing your waterfall setup, this is great for you. Um, it's great if you want more granular options to monetization performance for a placement. The accept all prices option, however, is best for a publisher who works only with audience network for their ad monetization or who wants to simplify the management of smaller placements or placements that are lower in the waterfall. So these options can also be utilized together, especially if you have a uh, waterfall setup to optimize your mediation. So how to set up CPM targets. First, you'll want to pull a report by placement and country for all of your demand sources for the last seven days to see what everyone is delivering. You'll want to also understand the performance the audience network can provide. So to do this with no monetization risk, you want to put audience network at the top of your waterfall with a CPM target that's about 10 to 20 percent higher than your existing top line item so that everything that's returned will be at a higher price point than what you would have received otherwise. And then you'll also want to set up country targets for your top countries. When you run the placements, run them for at least seven days with your set CPM target. This ensures that we are receiving enough historical data to accurately calibrate your CPM targets to be sustainable. 
And finally, optimize. After seeing your initial results, review the data to identify further ways to improve your fill rate for that placement. So the sandwich model gives you the ability to access audience network demand at various points in your waterfall to maximize your monetization opportunities. Follow these steps to set up a sandwich model for your placements. The basic principle is that you call a demand source audience network multiple times. And the value in this is that you should be able to see a very high CPM at the top of your waterfall, take up a small percentage of your requests. Here, we see a waterfall starting at $25 and leading down to 17. So your fill rate here at $25, maybe a small 5%. Um, but it allows you to capture your highest valued users at this level rather than settling for $21 or $23 for them. So then you'll add another demand source in between and create that sandwich within the second audience network placement, um, putting us at 10 to 20% lower from the above demand source in order to capture more of Facebook's demand. And typically we see this optimization drive revenue between 10 to 30%. So we have a few tools that you can use. Um, the optimize CPM target page in monetization manager is one of them. This tools this tool will help you make a more informed decision about your CPM target settings. It uses historical projections of CPM against the fill rate to give you a better estimate of what the respective CPM target should be set at in order to reach the average CPM or the fill rate that you want. Do note that this is a tool that is only available for placements with enough impressions to provide an accurate projection for. So just a couple more slides, bear with me. I've got some client testimonials. Uh, Calibri is a game in, in it's an idle casual publisher um, who optimized their waterfall with CPM targets, placing an extremely aggressive price target at the top of the waterfall at the top of the waterfall, and it found that it had enormous success with it. Fingersoft is a, a gaming studio who made a name for themselves after the launch of hill climbing, hill climb racing in 2012. Uh, however, Audience Network was getting a very low share of voice because our CPMs were not strong enough to be put at the top of the waterfall. So by implementing CPM targets, they were able to uh, double their daily revenue. And finally, let's touch quickly on A-B testing before we go into Q&As. Um, it's not always easy to find the optimal setting, but what exactly is A-B testing? At the highest level, they are experiments that are designed to test a hypothesis. So focused on single changes to provide a clean comparison between a test and control group. You'll need a randomized sample to, to minimize the bias within the test and the control group and you'll need the results to be of statistical significance to ensure that you're making that decision um, based off of real signals. For example, here's a native ad shown in two different countries with two different levels of CPM and two different layouts. So you'll see a comparison between implementing a large button and a small CTA button, and you can see a large difference in CPM for each of these countries. So this is only an example of what you can do. There are many more things that you can implement A-B testing on. So what should your team test? Um, ultimately, everything. Here are a few types of things that you can test. Uh, location of the ad, a specific design element like size and color, like in the previous example, the use of different cover images. You can test using bigger screen elements in particular full width ads. You can test ad frequency. You can test uh, caching, video, price targets, as well as bidding. So 
So there are a couple of key takeaways, and then we can come to your questions. First, monetization, monetization starts with the advertiser. So we are optimized for delivering the best advertiser value on audience network. That is always our primary focus. What that means is that the, be the better that your design with ads for your user flow and your user control is, the better your user experience will be. And this will ultimately work to drive better engagement, uh, better quality, and over time you'll see better CPMs and better performance as well. Uh, the second part to take away is to test video and price targets as well as bidding to maximize revenue. And third is to leverage A-B testing to identify the optimal approach to monetize your content. So I hope you found this helpful. Now would be a great time to ask any questions that you might have directly into the questions comment box. Uh, please keep in mind that I'll be answering any questions that it's relevant to this this presentation. So if you have anything that's not directly related to optimization, please continue to use our resources like our Help Center or support channel in Monetization Manager, as well as our Audience Network website that has a lot of Help Center content and resources there for you as well. If there are any questions now, however, I will be happy to take them.